Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Welcome back to my channel, Inside the Hem, and welcome back to the Trick or Treat series. Yay! Okay, so today is the third part of our series, and we're gonna be talking about seam allowance and how to make sure that you are keeping an even seam allowance no matter what the seam allowance is. So if you're doing a larger one inch, two inch, three inch hem, or if you're doing a smaller quarter inch, half inch hem, or if you're even doing the standard five eighths inch hem. Um, this is a neat trick um, that will, or is supposed to anyways, help you keep that seam allowance even through the entire seam. So let's see how it went. Okay, so this is gonna be a fun one for me, probably very humbling, but we are going to do a little experiment where we see how accurate I am sewing an unusual seam allowance, like one inch. Um, I have the one inch line marked on my machine, but you know, sometimes it's hard to follow that. So the trick is supposedly putting this rubber band here and the rubber band acts as a guide where your fabric brushes up against it barely and keeps it in line. So we are going to do two seam lines, one using the rubber band and one not using the rubber band and see if one is more accurate than the other. So these are for all those fun hems that we do from time to time, or even sometimes um, like you're wasting, you need to do something other than five eighths. So far it's very easy and mindless, I will say. Just kind of guiding it up on um, here, right where it's touching a burban for the first time. And now we're kind of not in a straight line anymore, so. Okay, so that is using the rubber band, I have to say, fairly easy, simple to do. Now let's take the rubber band off, and again, it just slips on right underneath your sewing foot. Make sure your needle's up, obviously. I'm going to add this back on, and we are going to use the other side. Well, that's a really crooked line. Let me straighten that up some. Okay, so now we have a straight line again. So let's line it up on the same one inch line that I have the rubber band on and see how it goes. Well, the first thing I noticed is that I wasn't able to go as fast, and that's annoying. I like to go fast. Uh, but in terms of accuracy, I have my seam gauge here, and you can see that I stayed on the one inch mark pretty much all the way throughout. Now, part of me wonders, and we'll see how I did on this side. Part of me wonders that if it weren't marked right here, like let's say I wanted to do two inches, which is all the way out here, or even further, like if I wanted to do a three inch hem, obviously there would be no guide. So let's try the two inch and see how that goes. So you just slide the band on, line it up with that two inch mark, making sure that it's perfectly straight all along the plate. And then we're just gonna use the same fabric, line up the raw edge with the edge of the rubber band. See how much faster that goes? So much faster. So that's cool. Um, now let's try it without a rubber band. And put this back on. 
And again, we're trying the two inch seam line. Okay. Okay, so although I think I'm fairly accurate in sewing using this little grid that's on my sewing machine. Um, oh, that's really interesting. That is not a two inch. Wait, what is happening? Yeah, is that not a two inch seam line? Oh my word. No, it's one and three quarters. Uh, maybe that's why I've been having so many issues with my hem. That's two and three quarters. One, two, three. And the edge of the plate is two inches. Interesting. Okay, well, I learned something new. Um, Even though I was accurate at sewing the one and three quarters seam line all the way through, um, I think that's with practice. If I were a beginner, I think the Moran trick would be really great. Or if you wanted to do like a really wide three or four inch hem. Um, I would put the needle down, budge the hem guide right up on it like so, and then put the rubber band on. Oh, the needle's in the way. Maybe put the rubber band on first, then needle down, then hem guide, and then make sure the two kind of line up like so and just make sure that that rubber band is on there straight and then you would be able to get a really good accurate three inch hem up to i guess i could do up to maybe four and a half i don't know why i'd want to do anything longer than a four and a half inch seam but if i did i could go all the way up to where this guy is it's as far as as far as the rubber band will go well, there you go. So I think that because I'm a bit of an experienced sewist, I'm pretty good at using the plate or is it the throat of my sewing machine? And I'm pretty good at keeping the fabric steady. But yes, Lindsay from five years ago, who was just learning how to sew, definitely needed a rubber band around her sewing machine. I will say though, putting the rubber band there, there now, did allow me to go faster and sometimes I like to sew fast. Sometimes I just need to get something done really quickly but still accurately and I feel like the rubber band helped a lot with that. Like a lot a lot. Um, I also feel like if you're doing something like a hem where you've got um, a layer folded under and then fold it under again to make a hem and you're you're sewing on top of your fabric and you can't see all those other layers but you know you measured them so you know they're at a certain width from the fold of your fabric this trick will help you make sure that you are catching that hem every single time you know what i'm saying so i do feel like there are some um definite pros for beginners Absolutely, every beginner should have a rubber band on their sewing machine. <laughs> and for those advanced, those of us that are advanced sewists, I feel like there's a lot of advantages too. So two thumbs up for the rubber band trick. And I say it's a treat and it works. Yay. Um, okay, so tomorrow's video, we are going to be doing a trick that will help us, we're supposed to help us gather fabrics more evenly, more easily, um, and just better than the usual task of sewing the two basting stitches and pulling them through and hoping you don't break one and trying to get them all even and yada, yada, yada. So tomorrow's trick is going to be for gathering a seam, whether it be a skirt or a ruffle or whatever. So stay tuned for that. If you want to um, see any of the videos that have already gone live from this week, check the description box. I'm going to be putting all the videos there at the end of the week. Every video will have a link um, where you can jump around throughout the series or reference back to it um, anytime that you need. So until tomorrow, I will see you all very soon. Like tomorrow. <laughs> okay, bye.